This video is sponsored by ARM. The end of CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, the largest tech event in the world, by the way. And I've noticed something while I'm here. There's a company here, one particular company, that is kind of killing it. And it's just everywhere at this show, even if you don't really see their name very often. And that's ARM. You may have heard of ARM or various ARM-based chipsets a lot lately, and there's good reason for that. But as most people don't seem to know what ARM is or what ARM does, I wanted to talk not just about what ARM is and who ARM is, as well as what ARM architecture and what ARM processors are and why they're everywhere. Okay, firstly, to talk about what ARM is, we need to talk about who ARM is because there's ARM the company and then there's ARM the processors, which we'll get to in a sec. The beginnings of ARM the company though, start with another company founded back in 1983 in Cambridge, England called Acorn Computers. Now at some time in the mid eighties, a team within that company was charged with finding a suitable processor for their next generation of computer. They went out looking, but after a while, they decided they couldn't find a processor that fit the specs that they needed. So over an 18 month period, they ended up designing their own instead. Fast forward to 1990 when Acorn Computers wasn't necessarily doing very well financially as a computer manufacturer, they spun out their processor designs into a new company called Advanced Risk Machines Limited. And then in 1998, the company shortened its name to ARM Limited. Now ARM doesn't actually make any chipsets. In fact, they don't even have any manufacturing facilities. Instead, they own the design of the chips and then they license that out to chipset manufacturers. In fact, ARM has over 1,000 technology partners with more than 270 billion ARM-based chips shipped to date. Also, 99% of all smartphones use ARM tech. Which begs the question, why is seemingly everyone using ARM's technology? Well, generally speaking, we have two main architectures used in chipsets today. We have ARM, and then we have traditional chipset architectures. One of the biggest differences between traditional chipset architectures and ARM are the way that each give instruction sets, or it's the way that the computer gives instructions to the chipset at the lowest level. The R in ARM stands for RISC, which in turn stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. And while that's a larger philosophy about computing in general, it basically means that the ARM processors need a much smaller instruction set compared to traditional chipset architectures, which can be given a much more complex one. Now it's a bit more complicated than this, but for this video, you can think of it like someone giving you a to-do list. ARM would give you one task at a time and you would do it and then come back to get the next task and then do that and so on. Whereas traditional chipset architectures would give you all of the tasks at once and you would go about figuring out how to get them all done. Now both of these have their own pros and cons, but thanks to the way that ARM works and thanks to ARM specific designs, they're a bit better in one very specific metric that is becoming more and more important these days, especially with more compute needed for AI and other workloads, and that's efficiency. On the one hand, traditional chipset architectures and their more complex instruction sets can handle more complex workloads like that to-do list and figure out how to do all of the tasks at once. And it's why you still see it being used at the higher end of computers for the most part, even though that is definitely changing quickly. On the other hand, ARM is a lot more power efficient as it doesn't have to use energy figuring out what to do with the to-do list, what order to do the tasks in, etc. It just gets the instructions, gets it done with the energy needed and comes back for the next one. This also means that less heat is produced, which is again why basically the entire smartphone ecosystem runs on ARM, a use case that needs better battery life and obviously can't have a fan in it. ARM's compute platforms are the most power efficient on the planet and their performance is increasing more and more. ARM's performance per watt or the performance per power used is incredible. It's to the point now that 70% of the world's population uses products powered by ARM technology. And so of course, here at CES, it's hard to find something that doesn't have ARM's technology inside. They're in TVs, like this new LG transparent OLED TV that you can actually see through. And it also has a contrast screen to turn it back into a normal OLED that just comes up motorized from behind. It's pretty cool. Along with all of their OLED TVs though, they're all powered by ARM. Even tablets like this ultra portable Lenovo M11 benefits from the power efficiency of the ARM cores and the fact that they can run cool without a fan. They're in smartwatches like this Garmin Lily 2 that won a best in show award from CES this year actually, that has up to five days of battery life is powered by ARM CPUs as are most of their other smartwatches as well. Chromebooks like the Asus Chromebook CM30 I saw at the MediaTek booth with MediaTek's Companio 520 chipset inside that's 
using ARM's CPUs and GPUs. It's also detachable, affordable, and it's military standard compliant against drops and shocks. There's gaming devices that you probably already know and love that are here, like the Sony PlayStation VR 2 that's powered by MediaTek and ARM processors. Even Exeger Powerfoil solar cell technology is being used in conjunction with ARM technologies inside all sorts of devices, from Adidas headphones to Urbanista portable speakers and more. And even in cars here, there's ARM everywhere being used for all sorts of components, like this, for example, Electrobit Next Gen Digital Cockpit that's a curved screen display that uses ARM to power the dashboard that's new here this year. And these are just a very small sample size of the range of products that you can find ARM's technologies in. At this point, ARM has created the most prevalent CPU architecture in history. And there you go. I hope this helped explain what ARM is. And if you already knew, I hope you learned something new about them. Regardless, thanks for watching the video. And if you want to learn more about some of the tech that ARM's technologies are in, check that out at the link below. I have to catch a flight now after a very long week here. So I got to go. Good night. Lately, and there's good honking. I am up in the air and I can hear the horns. Hmm. <laughs> Plane? Don't see it. Don't see it, just hear it. Literally, giant open sky, can't find it. <laughs> Weird. Oh, bus. Bus with squeaky brakes. One day they'll all be electric. Probably won't fix the brake problem, though, actually, I realize. <laughs> fix that sound, though. That'll be nice. <laughs> Rolly bag. It's a lot of those. It's the last day of the convention. Everybody's leaving, so they're bringing their luggage with them. Firstly, to talk about what arm is, we need to coffin up a storm. People delivering Cracker Barrel. I'm annoyed at the sounds, but I'm also jealous of the Cracker Barrel. Damn, more people yakking. Filming me at a convention. That's my first mistake. <laughs> ah, more rolly bags, so many rolly bags today. Today is rolly bag day. Bring your rolly bag to work day. Now ARM doesn't actually make any chipsets. Now ARM doesn't actually make... What are you doing, sir? Helicopter? I hear up, I hear, yep, there it is. <laughs> Can't escape him. Another one. Oh my god. I hear it. Again, another helicopter. Nope. Also a bus. Helicopter and a bus. They're better at one very specific metric that is becoming more roly bag. <sighs> Ambulance or a fire versa, I don't know. Something with a siren. <laughs>